Hey, have you tried the trimmable bonsai tree by Jolly Redbeard? I downloaded this on Thingiverse and wow, what an amazing and fun project to work on. It's the sort of thing that simultaneously showcases 3D printing and what it can do and is just a very fun and meditative project to work on. The way it works is this. You have two 3D models that you print at the same time. The trunk is printed normally, but the leaves of the tree are pure infill. That is to say, you print them and override the settings on just this model so that it prints with no top, bottom, or side infill. The result is a big block of infill with a trunk coming out of it. Now, I have found that I print it upside down. Redbeard recommends you print it sideways with supports, but I print it upside down and that to me has yielded the best results. Then you take this solid block of supports and you grab a pair of clippers and you just clip away at the tree until it starts to take a shape that you want. Now, of course, this is a fun way to play with different infill patterns, and you can try out different ones and see how they work. Now, doing this does require having a slicer that can handle overriding the settings on one model and not the other. I'm pretty sure this is possible in Prusa Slicer, but I did this in Cura. Now, I've been printing these on the King Rune KP3S S1. The S1 is for slice works. You might know the King Rune KP3S and in a previous video I crowned it an incredible 3D printer because it was topping my big spreadsheet of all the 3D printers that I've ever reviewed. But it's not quite at the top anymore. Still high, but I've rejiggered things on the spreadsheet and there are other printers higher than it. But the KP3S was still, and still is, an excellent 3D printer at a very cheap price. And the King Rune KP3S Pro adds a lot of great features. And the S1 improves upon those further with some really great quality of life improvements, like changing everything out for linear rails, giving us a removable print bed, as well as increasing the size of the print bed while still keeping everything in a very compact and portable design. I really love the handle on this thing because I think I'm going to be taking this around with me whenever I travel to 3D print printer blocks on while I'm out and about. It's just so easy to take around like that. It's also got a touchscreen interface. It's got the direct drive from the KP3S. They've added a filament out sensor, which is very welcome. Also, changing out the rails to linear rails means that you, there's no eccentric nuts, so it's great for beginners. And I really like that over the KP3S, which had its power supply unit on the outside of the machine, they've incorporated it into this machine, so you don't have that dangling out the sides. Plus, all of the major components of this are easily sourceable. It's a very hackable machine. In fact, I've seen some people online doing really cool things with these machines just because it's so easy to hack into. And I love it. It's great. And I, I really do enjoy my King Room KP3S S1, even if that is a mouthful. Though, if I can be a little bit critical, the loading and unloading of filament on it is not quite as buttery smooth as I would like, and I feel like they could improve that on the user interface. A simple software upgrade would make it easier to load and unload the filament. And, you know, these little rollers that they have for putting filament onto and rolling it into your 3D printer, I recommend as soon as you can get rid of those. You can even 3D print a spool holder that can hold up here and have your filament just dangling off the side. Although me, I've got plenty of those that I can just pull out and use. So I'll go ahead and use one of these that I got laying around for that. Now, I printed most of these models in Sliceworks' own PLA. Sliceworks took a look at other PLAs that you buy, even ones that you buy on Amazon, and realized that there were a lot of impurities in them. So they tried to make a filament that was as clear from impurities as possible. And I can tell you, it prints great and does a fantastic job. 
You know, I usually tell people that it doesn't matter where you get your PLA from. PLA is PLA and that you should just buy locally, buy the filament that you can get and, and try to, you know, not ship it from too far. Well, Sliceworks is a US company, so for me, I'm probably gonna be buying filament from them in the future. Oh, and uh, Sliceworks rolls fit perfectly in Bamboo's AMS system, just in case you were wondering about that. Overall, I'm really pleased with the S1, and I'm excited that Sliceworks, being a US company, will make it very easy to get this machine serviced if ever that becomes necessity. But so far, it's been pretty darn good. Now, back to the bonsai trees. The fun thing about this is that you can experiment with different infills. I found that 3D crosses and gyroid infills are the most fun and, and provide little pockets that you can trim away. But I was really surprised by doing just a generic grid infill, the sort of infill that usually comes by default for most 3D printers and just has blocks going all the way down. This kind of forced me as I was trimming it to kind of trim it in, well, for lack of a better term, blocks, voxels. It, it kind of makes an interesting stair-step pattern in the design, just the way that it falls away, making it almost look like a, a Minecrafty sort of tree. But you know the one that has been the most surprising to me was the cuboid infill. I did not expect cuboid infill to be well, not only this dense, and I did reduce this one to 20% infill so that it would be more dense, thinking that smaller pockets would be easier to cut away, but the cuboid infill was very difficult to cut. I even tried cutting this thing with a Dremel tool and it just refused to give at all. So I made another cuboid infill, this one much less dense at only 10%, and I still can't cut into this thing. It has so many large and flat sections that all bond together that it's just about impossible to find anywhere that you can get purchase on here to rip away a small part. And the surprise about this to me is that well, while I love gyroid infill, it's beautiful and it's fun to watch it print, especially in time lapses. Cuboid is the one that I think I'm going to use from now on if I want a 3D print to be indestructible because even at low density infill, this is just rock solid. So I learned something new about infill patterns by doing this project. And that, to me, was a lot of fun. And you should also check out the King Rune KP3S S1 from King Rune and Sliceworks. But I want to thank you very much for watching. I want to remind you that you are a child of God and you're special to me. So take care of yourself and I'll see you next time.